Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. One question I often get, as a matter of fact, I get this question at least once a week. Someone will email me links to the work of a photographer they really admire with the question, how do they get this look? I want to get that look for my images. Well, if I could figure out how that photographer got that look, it's probably impossible for me to try to communicate in an email how to do it. So what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. First of all, we're going to find a relatively famous photographer and I'm going to show you how you might be able to capture their look and use it for your images. Next, we're going to just take an image that I just like the look of it and I don't even know who the photographer is and we're going to get the look from that image and copy it or use it on an image. And then finally, I'm going to show you how you could then, once you have that look captured, you could create a profile that you could use in Lightroom. So you don't have to go through this process all the time. And yes, it is a process, but it's really relatively easy. It's just a lot of steps. You don't need any special skills in Photoshop to achieve this. You just have to take notes as we go and you'll be able to do it. Now, to clarify, uh, we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop 2020 CC. The important part is CC, Creative Cloud. It will only, what I'm going to show you, will only work in Creative Cloud versions of Photoshop. It will not work on any standalone versions that you may have. So, this is for CC users only. The other thing is, I mentioned in the title that this includes Lightroom. Really, 99% of this and all the heavy lifting is done in Photoshop. The Lightroom, Lightroom part is when we create that profile and you could then just do this in Lightroom without having to go back into Photoshop. Now, when I talk about a look, I'm specifically talking about the color. So if you're really into a photographer and they have a specific kind of black and white monochrome look, this won't necessarily be applicable to you or that photographer. This is for a specific type of color look. Now we're gonna start out with a photographer that's fairly well known. One photographer, this photographer at least, I love. I think her work is awesome. I'm gonna go over to her Instagram and her name is Maria Svarbova. Now in the description below this video, I'll have a link to her Instagram and actually I'm gonna mention another website too and I'll have a link to that in the description below this as well. Now if you look at Maria's work, she really not only nails it with color, has a very unique look color-wise to her images, but she nails composition and she nails light, you know, the important things that are in photography. But the color is really unique. Now, if you click like on this image, obviously composition, the way she has the models posed, the way the light is, that is contributing to the look. But another contribution to the look is her colors, very unique. And if you go through, you can see how she has this very unusual kind of look to her images. And that is really what compels me. So if you go through and you just start looking at her Instagram, you can see these looks that she achieves. Um, when I first stumbled across her was a few years ago and she did this swimming uh, type series. And you can see it's, it's really interesting. So you could go through. Now anyway, as I go through, this image right here, I like this. I like the look. I like the colors. I want to imitate those colors and take those colors and somehow have them applied to this image. Now, this isn't an image I took. This is an image I downloaded from Adobe Stock. So I want to try to capture her colors. Well, let's go back to Photoshop for a minute. Photoshop CC includes an extension that isn't by default on. You just have to add it. Go to Window, down to Extensions, and we're gonna add Adobe Color Themes. And when you do that, you'll see over here on the right-hand side, we have a new panel popping out, Adobe Color Themes. And by the way, I'm in the Photography Workspace. So if your Photoshop doesn't look like this, go up to this little drop-down right here and go down to Photography. So I'm in the Photography Workspace and I just enabled the Adobe Color Themes extension. So we're seeing this. Now you can see there's a color wheel here and we have some color swatches, five color swatches. So we could create our own color theme 
uh, with this color wheel and they help you along with different rules. If you click on this, you could see that there's an analog analog analogous rule that is where all the colors are close to each other on the color wheel and they all complement one each other or they all are pleasing to look at because they're close to each other on the color wheel. And you can see there's a monochromatic rule, there's triads, there's complementary colors. So those are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And you could drag these around and create your own type of color uh, palette that you could use on an image. But I mentioned I want to copy Maria's look on that specific image. Well, if I go to Explore, the second tab over, and in the search bar, I just put her name, right? And I hit Enter. Well, look, there's Maria. There's a bunch of colors right here, color palettes that I could use. But how do I know which one is specific to that image? Well, there's something more we could do. Let's go over to this website, color.adobe.com. You'll see over here we have a color wheel. This is the exact same thing that we had in Photoshop in that first tab, this Create tab. Same exact thing. We could go to Analogous, uh, Monochromatic, Triad, Complementary, so on. We could create our own uh, set of colors right here if we wanted to. But we're going to go to Explore. I'm going to go in this search box, and I'm going to put her name again and click Enter. Now all this pops up, and I have some photos for reference. As a matter of fact, I have the exact photo that I'm talking about. And this is the colors that are used for that photo. How cool is that? So I'm going to go down here and I'm just going to download this to my computer. So download as ASE. So just do that and we got it downloaded, all right? Now, once it's downloaded, uh, I just want to point out something else while I'm here real quick. You'll notice that many of them have photos as of reference. So we could click on this and you could see this is the photos for Hedda Gabler. Look who uploaded it, Maria Svarbova. She uploaded it herself to share with everyone. So you could get her look for this image right there. So uh, this one too, she uploaded it, Maria Svarbova. So a lot of these, the ones with the images are the ones she uploaded. But there's some that don't have images. And if you click on one of those, you'll see that a, per, a different person created it. This one, Jasmine Svar, Saverda, Vedra, I'm sorry, Savedra, uploaded it. So she's a fan of Maria's, and she created a palette of colors of her own that match something that she thinks Maria would have used. So um, not necessarily what I want. So if you want to just get the original artists uploads go over here on the right to this little drop down and go to creative projects now we're just looking because i searched for maria svarbova those are just maria svarbova's uploads right here and the specific images she uploaded with the color palettes we could use so there's that now you remember i downloaded it already right so if i download it already it's in my downloads folder it's right here Okay, Adobe Color Dining Room ASE. Why is it called Dining Room? Because she calls it Dining Room. All right, so that's what we have. Now, somehow, I have to get that palette of colors into Photoshop. So we're going to go back to Photoshop. Now, to get them in here is we just need to install them in the Color Swatch panel. By default, the photography workspace does not have the color swatch panel showing. So just go up to Window and down to Swatches. Right, it opened up. There's our color swatch panel. Then we go to this little flyout menu in the top right hand corner and go down to Import Swatches. Once you do that, you just navigate to where that uh, swatch set is. It's on my desktop. I'm going to click Open. Now at the very bottom, it got loaded. It's called Adobe Color Dry Dining Room. And if I open it up, there are the colors right there. Five colors, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, how do I apply them to this image? Well, we're going to use a gradient map. Now this isn't to be um, confused with a gradient that is in Lightroom, like a radial gradient or a linear gradient that's in Lightroom. This type of gradient map, what it does is it maps all the tones in the image. And it will apply the specific colors that I tell it to, 
to specific tones and it will make it so that it, it gradually changes from one tone or one color to the next from tone to tone. And hopefully it will colorize the image in a way. Colorize isn't the correct term, but you get the idea. It'll make it look like Maria's work. So what we're gonna do to do this is we're gonna go at the very bottom here, this little circle that's half gray, half white. Click on that, go to gradient map. Now you can see it added a gradient map a layer above our background layer and it applied a gradient right away to it. We don't want this gradient obviously. So just click right on that bar and we'll get the gradient editor. Now I'm going to move the gradient editor over there. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to open up our swatches. All right. Now the gradient editor as you look at it, the part we're interested in is this bar right here. On the very far left are the darkest tones and the very far right are the um, brightest tones. And at the bottom is the color section, and at the top is the opacity section. We just really are concerned with the color section. Now what we wanna do is assign a color to this little spot right here, right where I clicked, right there. Now, some photographers, because this is the darkest side of the bar, they'll take the darkest one of these tones and put it there and they'll keep moving to the right until the lightest tone is at the far right. Other photographers reverse it. They'll put the lightest tone on this side and go to the darkest tone. Some will just haphazardly just start clicking on them and add them down there. There's no right or wrong way. I'm just going to take them in order. So I clicked on this far left box at the bottom, and then I'm gonna click on the first color swatch in the set of dining room. And I just assign that right there. Now we need to assign the other four. Since there's five of them, now you don't have to assign all five. You could assign three, you could assign two. I'm going to assign all five, and I'm going to put them close enough to equidistant across this bar. So I'm going to go about there. Put a, do a click. So when I went under, you can see how the cursor turned in that little hand tool. So I clicked, and I could move it to adjust it. And on this little spot, I'm going to put the second one right there. Now I need one right in the middle. Now don't worry what it's doing to the image. Go right in the middle or at least close to the middle as I can. Click again. And then I'm going to put the third one. Then I'm going to go between the middle and the end or close to between. And I'm going to put the fourth one. And then I'm going to go to the very last one. And I'm going to put the very last one over here. So now we assigned all five across this. Now you could adjust them. If you don't like where they are, just move them around. But I leave them just like that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to close down the swatch panel as well. Now I'm going to change the blend mode. Now most often the blend, blend modes that are used are overlay and soft light, but you could try them all. There's no rules. Again, do whatever you like. Um, but as I go through, you could see saturation, color, Overlay is like really overbearing. Soft light's a little less overbearing. Let's click on that, but it still is overbearing. So I'm going to go to the opacity slider and I'm just going to bring opacity down to maybe 40%. There's before, there's after. You can see how I've achieved this kind of look that she has in this image on this image. There's before, there's after. Again, if I don't like uh, if I don't think it's strong enough, I could go to opacity and turn it back up. If I want to come in and readjust anything, double click on that circle right there, that half gray, half white circle. And then I'll get this again, click on this, and then I could edit what I just did if I want to. But I think that's pretty good. So that's how I just imitated a Maria's work and put it to this image that I downloaded from Adobe Stock. Now, what do you do if you have an image, but you, the person isn't really famous? There's no uh, color swatches on Adobe for that person. What do you do? Well, go to adobe.color.com. Go back to create. All right. Remember we're at the color wheel? See this one, extract theme? Click on that. We could drop a file right in here. We could drop an image right here and it will extract the colors from it and come up with five swatches for us. I mean, how cool is that? Now, what I did was I just went online and I liked the, the color grading that was in the movie Joker. I thought it was brilliant, brilliantly done. So in the, I found a still from the movie 
and you can see the colors are kind of weird, aren't they? So we're going to use this, and I'm going to take that, the colors from that image, and I'm going to apply it to this image of my son's old band, all right? So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to go back over here to color.adobe.com, select a file, click right here. I'm going to pick that Joker image that I downloaded. I'm going to click choose and there it pick the colors. Now I have a little bit of control. I could I do I want them colorful or do I want them bright? You can see how they changed. Do I want them muted? Do I want them deep? Do I want them dark? Do I want none of that? All right. Um, for this image, because they were kind of a pop punk band when they were around, let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's go with deep. All right, let's just go with deep. So what do we do? Well, we need to save it. So if we click on save, it's going to save it to, in this case, I have it set to my library on Adobe. That's why you need a Creative Cloud subscription. So I'm going to click save. So it's saved in my library now. All right, so we'll go back to Photoshop. And if you look at my library, which is in the libraries tab of the photography workspace, you can see there they are. Now they're no good here. We actually can't click on these like I did with the color palette from Maria's. They have to get in the swatches. We have to get this in here to use it. It's, it's just not usable right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Adobe color themes. Remember, this is the extension we enabled. We're going to go to My Themes, the very last tab. And when I do that, you'll see eventually, there it is, right there. These are the colors that are right there. Now we're going to just right-click on these three little dots, and we're going to add two swatches. So now they're in the swatches. So we'll go up to the swatches, and... There they are at the bottom. They're not in their own folder. I could put them in their own folder by clicking this little folder icon, give the folder a name, and drag them into the folder. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that. But you get the idea. So there they are right there at the very bottom. So now I need to put a gradient map on this image. I'll click this circle down here at the bottom. Go to Gradient Map. Click on this to open up the Gradient Editor. Close that down. Open up my swatches again. Go down here to this bar, the far left-hand side. I'll click on this box, and I'm just going to click on the darkest swatch on the far left. Then I'm going to go about partway between the left-hand side and the middle. Click there. Click that second one. I'm going to go right around the middle. Add another box there. Click on the third one from the left. Then go around there. Click on the second last one, and then go on the last one over here, and click on the last one up in the swatches. So now I applied that look. All right, we're not done yet. You have to change the blend mode. Go to the blend mode drop down. You could try overlay, soft light. I don't know. You could try others too. There's saturation, color sometimes looks pretty cool. I think uh, what we'll do on this one, I'll go with overlay, but then I'm going to take the opacity down. So I kind of took that joker color look and i applied it to this image um, i could play again around with overlay some more i could go back into the gradient editor by double clicking on this uh, little circle there clicking there and then i could rearrange things i could move these around and i could try to improve it now i don't really care for it myself i just ran cold on this i didn't practice this ahead of time but that's how you would go about doing it now i mentioned that you could do this in Photoshop every single time. As you can see, it's a multi-step process. But let's just say, let's go back to this first one. I really like this, and I want to use it in Lightroom. Well, I could create a profile. Now, we create the profile in Photoshop. What we're going to do to do that is now we have to create a LUT first, step one. So we're going to go to File, down to Export, and then down to Color Lookup Table. Now. Um, grid points, I'd say use 64. That works good. And we need a dot cube LUT. So only have cube checked here. If you have any others checked, it will create more files than you'll need. So we're just going to use cube. Don't worry about what it says in the description. Doesn't matter. Click OK. 
Now we're going to uh, save it somewhere. I'm going to put it on my desktop and I'm just going to give it Maria's name, Maria Svarbova. All right, we're going to click save. So I created the LUT. All right, step one. Now what we need to do is we need to use that LUT in a profile. Now to do that, we need to go to Camera Raw. Now if we just go up here to Filter, Camera Raw isn't active because I'm on the gradient map. Just click on the background. Go up to Filter, and then down to Camera Raw Filter. Now what you do when this opens in Camera Raw is what you'll need to do is go to the very last tab on the far right. This is the Presets tab. And you probably know that if you go down here at the very bottom and you just click this little like turned up corner here, we could create a new preset. Well, we don't want to create a preset. We want to create a profile. To create a profile, hold the Alt or Option key when you click on that. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac, and you'll get a profile editor now. So let's give this a name. I'm going to give it um, Maria, and then I'm just going to give it a dash one because maybe I'll create more, right? And I'm going to put it in a new group, and I'm going to call the group, um, I'm going to call the group Color Grading. Oops. All right, you could call it anything you like. All right, then everything else we just ignore. We go down to Color Lookup Tables right here. Click there, and we're going to load that Color Lookup Table we created. It's a .cube file. We just created it. We're going to click Load. All right, and we're just going to click OK. All right, now, actually, that profile is installed not only in Photoshop, but in Lightroom. If you want to use it in Photoshop, you open up Adobe Camera Raw, just like we are open now. Go to that first tab, the basic tab, click on these little bricks over here. We uh, put it and we called it color grading. There it is right there. I called it Maria Svarbova dash one. And there's look, you could click on it. And we have an amount slider up here. If you want it stronger, move it to the right. If you want it weaker, move it to the left. So you all have all that available to you. Now, we're going to cancel out of, you don't even have to save this. So just cancel out. You won't lose the profile we just created. Let's just get out of there. And we're going to minimize Photoshop. And we're going to open up Lightroom. Now, it automatically installed in Lightroom. So once Lightroom opens, we're going to go to the Profile Browser, which is in the Basic tab of Lightroom, and you'll see it's there. Now I have this image in Lightroom as well. There it is, unprocessed. We're going to click on those little bricks. We're going to go towards the bottom. There it is, color grading, and you can see there it is, Maria Svarbova. Click on it, apply it to the image, and you could apply or adjust the amount with this amount slider at the top, and you're done. So. That is how you could kind of try to get the idea of the colors someone may use in their image. Um, I know there's a lot of steps involved. I know this video was way longer than most of my videos. I, if you made it this far, thank you very much for, you know, sticking with it. I hope this helps you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I always need the positive encouragement. I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.